So here we are with unit three, lecture three, this is hearing. <clears throat> so we talked about uh, what sensation is, difference a little bit about sensation and perception. We took sensation as a whole. We took a look at vision, which is the most dominant, vision is the most dominant of all of our senses. And now we're gonna talk about hearing and hearing is the second most dominant. I'm not gonna say important, but the second most dominant of the human senses for those of us with all of our senses. Uh, hearing comes in at number D out of the group. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about uh, levels of sound. We're gonna talk about different parts of the ear and we're gonna talk about hearing loss and we're gonna talk about hearing location and things such as that uh, with this lecture. So anytime we talk about audition, we're talking about audio, we're talking about hearing. Uh, the sense of hearing, we pick up vibrations in the air and turn those into electrical signals, which then go uh, to our brain and get put together into what we know as sound. Now, when it comes to uh, the sound that we are getting, uh, the, 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 the number of waves that come in is the frequency. Think of sound like if you've got a big uh, pond and you drop a pebble into the pond and near the pebble, you have these really big waves, powerful energy, but then as it goes further and further and further away, the energy becomes less and less and less and less, which is why when you're next to something, it's really loud, but then further away from that something, it's not as loud because it doesn't have as much energy. Now, the shorter the waves that we have, the higher the pitch, the longer the waves we have, the lower the pitch. When you think of playing on a piano, when you hit those high notes, those high notes, they, bing, they seem really quick. And then the long notes, the, burn, the deeper notes, boom, the low pitch, because they're longer, lower, longer sounds. Okay, so uh, that's the frequency of, is it a short wave or a long wave? When you see here with short waves or longer waves versus shorter waves, that tells you, are they high, pitch sounds versus low pitch sounds. Uh, now, when it comes to the loudness of something, that is the amount of energy and the higher the wave is the more energy you have. Again, if you go back here, you notice this, the higher wave, that's a much louder sound than this right here is a much less of a sound, louder sound, lower sound, or less of a sound going on there. So these are measured in decibels and the more the bigger the wave you got the more decibels the smaller the waves the fewer decibels now again decibels get a little bit confused because we think oh we go from 1 to 15 to 20 or whatever and we think of just training up stereo it's not like that because every 10 decibels is a tenfold increase in sound you got to think of each decibel is doubling the amount of sound that was there before it so you got to take a look at decibel levels, kind of like the, uh, the uh, Richter scale of an earthquake. A uh, normal conversation is 60 decibels, uh, but that's 10,000 times louder than a 20,000 decibel whisper because you keep doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling. Uh, and when you talk about prolonged exposure to over 85 decibels, it's going to lead to serious hearing loss. You know, any of us can be part of a normal conversation, a quiet office, a whisper, an average automobile or heavy traffic, and it's not that big of a deal. But you're sitting next to that subway train all day, every day. You're sitting on that runway with that airplane without any protection. You're, you know, it's one thing to go to an occasional concert and some loud sound and yay, that was fun. And you leave it ringing. Uh, but when you're doing that day after day, hour after hour, that's when you're gonna have some long-term hearing loss. And the trick about hearing loss is once you lose it, you can't really regain it. Uh, so again, there with different sort of decibel levels at what you've got and everything else. Uh, and again, here you see louder sounds, much higher, softer sounds, a little bit shorter, uh, longer pitch things a little bit, or uh, I'm sorry, lower pitch things a little bit wider, higher pitch things a little bit shorter in the way that they are produced. When, and, and any of you that have ever done any sort of uh, audio mixing on a computer, this should look very, very familiar to you. Uh, now, as far as how sound becomes electrical signals in our ear, it goes through a little process here. This is your ear picking up sound waves and taking it into your ear. Now, sound waves are a little bit strange for us because when we pick up our own voice, uh, not only do we pick up 
the sound waves out here, but we also pick up the vibrations in our own face. And so it's a little bit weird. We really don't know what we sound like because our ears are picking it up from being echoed everywhere else. If you want an idea of what you sound like, what you do is you take your hand like this, you hook your back of your ear, you pull your ear down and you talk right into the palm of your hand. And then that goes directly into your ear. And that gives you a pretty good idea of what you truly sound like. So it's the job of the ears to take in this energy and get it to go down the auditory canal and vibrate the eardrum right here. Now, where a lot of us have some problems, again, is a couple of things. First off is um, Q-tips. Man, do not shove Q-tips in your ear because what you're doing is you're, you're affecting the wax and it's building up and it's not gonna enable a vibration to go on down here and everything else. And by the way, the wax in your ear is a good thing. It's good to have wax in your ear because it protects it and whatnot. And when you keep shoving it down and shoving it down and shoving it down, you get a bit of a buildup there and it becomes a big problem. Uh, also, when it comes to stereo equipment and putting earbuds in here, which shoves the music in there and doesn't allow it to go anywhere else, that's also a big problem. What you want to do is instead of, you know, if you're wearing earbuds and you're coming down the hallway and I can hear your music, it's way too loud. If someone else can hear your music, it's way too loud because what you're trying to do is you're trying to drown out everything going on around you. Which is why, again, when it comes to your hearing, spend a couple of extra bucks, get noise canceling headphones or earbuds or whatever. And their job is to cancel out all other sounds so that the music doesn't have to be that loud because it's not competing against anything else. Anyways, once you get through the auditory canal, then we get to the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And their job is to, once they get the vibrations and hit the eardrum, they sort of vibrate around and their job is with the cochlea in here is to shake this up and to shake up all these little fluids so that you can take that sound and turn it into energy. Now, a couple of types of hearing loss that we have. One type of hearing loss is what is called conductive hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss is usually due to damage to the middle ear. The damage could happen because of a loud explosion. Let's say you're in the military, you were next to a loud explosion, you know, boom, it can blow out your eardrum. Put a hole in your eardrum right here so now this can't vibrate over into here. Sometimes you can have some fluid that develops into the inner ear. Sometimes you can have some wax. And again, with those Q-tips, you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, which is going to block the eardrum and stop the hearing as well. So conductive hearing loss is immediate hearing loss usually due to injury. Now, a way to get past this could be a cochlear in implant, which mimics the functions of these things right here. But it's usually a single traumatic uh, incident that would require surgery to fix. Now, when we get to your inner ear, this is your cochlea. And the cochlea is this little, looks on the outside kind of like a snail thing. Inside of this, you've got a bunch of fluid that's going on. So again, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup are shaking up right here, this fluid. So this fluid goes against these tiny little hairs right here. And these tiny little hairs right here, your basilar membrane, these 16,000 tiny little hairs. And their job is to take up the sound and, or to take up the little movement of the fluid and to sort of vibrate. So you got 16,000 tiny little hairs picking up the fluid and picking up the motion. And then their job is to turn it in. This is where it transduces into electricity, turn it into an electrical signal, which then gets sent to the auditory cortex and the temporal lobe and other parts of the brain as well. And they make up what the sound is and they put it back together into its little pieces. The, mo uh, the more hairs that are responded, the louder the sound becomes. Uh, now, the trick with these tiny little hairs, these 16,000 hairs that you get, it's fantastic when you're first born because they're brand new hairs. They are like brand new carpet, okay? It's brand new carpet, but the more and more that you walk in the carpet, it gets worn down. You put furniture on a carpet, so you're constantly, constantly, constantly exposing it to that pressure. That carpet gets worn down really, really fast. There's an area of your family room that people keep walking across. It's going to wear down the carpet really, really uh, quickly. And again, this is where really loud sounds happening all the time are really going to wear out these tiny hairs. And this results in what is called sensioneural hearing loss. Now, again, we're all going to lose our hearing. Our hearing is going to get a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse as we get older. But what tends to be happening with more people listening to earbuds, with more people being exposed to louder sounds and everything else, it's happening a lot sooner. 
90% of all hearing loss is sensorineural, which na again, naturally happens over time. If you've ever walked into your grandparents' house and the television is unbelievably loud, it's because they, their hairs have just gotten worn down and worn down and worn down. And what sucks about it is in sensorineural hearing loss is you lose your ability to hear soft sounds. Soft sounds you can't pick up. You can pick up loud sounds, but loud sounds still sound loud. Uh, this is the third most common health problem in the United States is hearing loss. And it's getting worse, especially with earbuds, headphones, loud music, all these things. It's getting worse. Uh, so again, if you're looking for a job to go into down the road, hearing uh, aids, great, great, great business uh, to get into. Some more things there on uh, your earbuds and headphones that you can have. Uh, now, so how do we get pitch? How do we get this sound? There's a couple of theories on this. There's two different theories. And of course, with psychology, we gotta have theories on, on how we get sound, we can't just tell you. One theory is what is called the place theory. And the place theory basically says that this is my basilar membrane coming around here within my cochlea. And there's these different 16,000 hairs, depending on which place, which part is, is impacted, that's gonna give me a sound. The bass sound is gonna be over here. Uh, the higher sounds are going to be up here. Uh, so it, again, it depends on which part of the membrane is, uh, is, is vibrating as to, as to how the sound is going to come. All right. The frequency theory, on the other hand, says how it takes the whole basilar membrane the same and it goes, well, how, what is the frequency? of the uh, movements and that's gonna give me the pitch. That's gonna give me the sound. So either it's the part of the membrane that's stimulated or the whole membrane as a whole, how often it is stimulated, that's gonna give me the sound. And again, we're talking about the, the rate can be a thousand waves per second uh, when you get to the upper third of the piano keyboard. That's really, really, really a lot of frequent sounds. But the more frequent it is, the higher the pitch sound, the less frequent, the lower the pitch uh, sounds are as well. Another thing that your ear does that a lot of people don't think about is uh, balance. We talked about your cerebellum with balance before, but this right here, the, the top, the semicircular canals on the top of your uh, cochlea, there's your cochlea down here and the fluid that goes through and is vibrating and everything else. But here they kind of, there's a little air. So there's little kind of like air holes up there. It's like, um, when you when you're balance and when you're uh, trying to make sure that something's level, you have that little thing with the with the hole in it, uh, and it sort of shows you whether or not something is level. That is the little hair hair up there. Now, what happens is, is we go too far this way or too far that way, lose your balance. If I'm in my chair here and I lean back, the fluid is sort of putting the air pocket up here, and I can feel I'm going back too far this is too far forward then what happens is if you get on a roller coaster you get on a merit around whatever and you get spun around spun around spun around spun around you know you take this glass right here if I spin it there's fluid in here if i spin it around spin it around spin it around spin it, the fluid around and then stop the fluid's going to keep going that's dizziness so as we move around move around move around move around move around all this fluid is moving around that i stop and it's like ooh, ooh, ooh. that's dizziness that's motion sickness that's not your sensory adaption isn't quite working out that's how we get dizzy uh, from that. And that's also why when you combine that with your vision, this is how virtual reality works. When you get in that little, you know, that, that, that little uh, virtual uh, pilot seat, they give you the video of the plane going up, down, whatever, but they'll also lean your plane forward, lean your plane back, left, right. And it gives you more of a sensation of actually being in an airplane. Uh, now, sound is also fantastic for locating where things are. If somebody snaps their fingers over here, it's a little bit louder in this ear than it is here because it hits this ear a little bit quicker. Uh, so it's able to help me locate when you go to the movies uh, and you and something's in Dolby surround sound, the way the sound comes across the speaker tells you where on the screen it is. Uh, I'm, I'm a pretty frugal guy. I don't like to spend a lot of money, but what I do like to spend money on is sound. And I've got a little, little sort of tiny media room over there. And with that, I've got like a 9.2 system, 
which means that there's nine speakers and two subwoofers that I have. It's very similar to this. So I've got two floor speakers. I've got a center speaker. I've got a high left and a high right, a rear right and a rear left. And I've got two side speakers. So as a result, if I'm watching something on my screen, let's say it's a helicopter from here coming down, it's going to sound really loud up here. Then as the helicopter comes down, suddenly these speakers will become more loud as it gets down there. If something goes from the right of the screen to the left of the screen, it'll start loud on these speakers. Then as it moves across, it'll become louder over here and less loud there. If it's something from behind me, you know, my, my rear speakers will be real loud as the thing comes over the top of my head and then those speakers become loud down over there. So again, it's the location of sound. Or, or, or the location of where something is. Sound is very important with that. You take a look at a gentleman right here, like Daniel uh, Tish. Daniel Tish is blind. He's sitting here riding a bike. He's blind. He is blind. But he can see through echolocation. You know, he can make these little t -t 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 sounds with his teeth, little t -t 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 sounds, and, and, and listen for them to bounce off of other things. Again, he's blind. So his visual cortex, his, his, his occipital lobe, uh, is a mean used for vision. So it helps him process how far away, how loud is that sound? Where are those things out? And he can make sort of a mental picture of where things are. Uh, if you're taking this in my class, we'll watch a video on Daniel Tish and how he does this. And it works very similar to what bats do. Bats have terrible vision, but all that little squeaking and squealing and they've got this radar, with the big, big ears, they can sort of tell uh, where things are and where the location of things are through sound, okay? That wraps up vision because again, the rest of class, we would be watching a couple of videos on vision there, which are connected uh, to my website, okay? Uh, so the next, um, the next lecture, we'll take a look at the other senses outside of vision and hearing. We'll take a look at things such as touch. We'll take a look at, um, we'll take a look at taste. We'll take a look at smell. We'll take a look at your, um, your kinesthetic sense. And we'll also talk a little bit about uh, sensory uh, interaction that goes on as well. So that gets us wrapped up. Oops, I blanked that out. That gets us wrapped up here. Okay.